Welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at how to create a random hat filter uh, using 3D objects. Now to make our life easier we will be using the head decoration template. Um, however you could create this without this template if you used to export the head occluder and diffuse material and we'll explain how this was set up in a second. So I'm just going to open up this template which has the advantage of already having uh, this sort of occluder already set up for us. So if you want to set this up from scratch, we could do. We could just, like I said, uh, export the hat block uh, and the head occluder. And the material is just a material with its opacity set to zero. And just set it up as you can see here. This hat here is this hat block that's down here. Anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a random filter similar to the ones we did with the 2D planes, except this time we're going to be working with 3D objects. So what the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to download some 3D hats. Uh, again, we could make these in Blender, um, but for the purposes of the tutorials, I will be just using ones from the Spark AR library. So I'm going to import this police hat. And let's pick two more hats. So let's pick a top hat. And I'm also going to pick this wizard hat. There we go. And I'm only going to choose three for now. Um, because one thing we're going to have to remember is because we're working with 3D assets, we can't deal with as high uh, file sizes. So we've got to try and optimize where possible. So we can't go with super detailed, multiple hundreds of options for this effect to work. We do have to keep this one a little bit limited. So again, we're going to set this up similar to what we did with the, the plain ones, except we will be doing a few uh, modifications to the setup, including uh, adding an and in there to actually only allow this to run when the uh, two conditions are met. So in this case, we're going to have a runtime linking to our offset value. And I'm going to be using a screen tap for the purposes of illustrating it in this video. But again, you could use this as a screen recording uh, trigger. And there is a video on the channel that I'll be linked in the description down below that will go through how to set that up if you want a screen recording instead of screen tap option. But for the purposes of demonstration, it is easier to use a screen tap in the emulator because you can't um, emulate screen recording within the emulator at this point. So if on my screen tap, I'm going to click and drag and add a switch and I want to have this screen tap linked to the switch as a turn on not as a flip and I also want the screen tap to link to my reset value up here so what we're going to do is when this value is um, reset we're going to then link it from that to a less than or it could be a greater than again this is up to your personal choice and then, so when this value here is less than a value we set here, so let's say six seconds, we want this to fire off a trigger and this to fire off a trigger. So to do that, I want these two conditions to be met. So to do that, I need to add an and. And I'm going to link my switch to the bottom input on the and and my less than to the top input on the and. So when the screen is tapped, so this will be fired as long as these two conditions are met. Once this goes over six seconds, this top uh, trigger will disable, therefore this effect will stop anything past that point. So I'm gonna add in the loop animation again and change its duration to be something like 0 0.1. I'm then gonna link from my loot to a random patch and set the value for this to be two because we're gonna have three options so zero one and two that's three options I want the value to be rounded um, and then we'll have it so when this equals exactly um, zero we'll have one thing show when it equals one we're gonna have another one show and then when it equals two we're gonna have a the third one show so now I need to put our hats into our scene. So I'm going to select, start off with the police hat, for example. 
drag this onto where it says drag here if we're using the default template. I'm going to have to do some adjustments to this one, so just bear with whilst I adjust these values. So it's the right orientation, etc. And I'm also going to scale these down. So by using the drag here, the occluder is t uh, acting as a, um, a blocker, basically. And occluding materials are essentially like invisible materials that allow things to be shown. I'm just going to pause the video so I can move this hat down. And I'm just going to scale this down a little bit because it's still a little bit on the large size. There we go. And I just need to again position this so it doesn't clip into the person's head. I'm now going to delete the default hat it comes with. And I'm going to do this two more times, again adjusting the values until they are somewhat correct. Oh, I don't want 10, I want that to be 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. There we go. And then we all drag this down. Still a bit too large, so again, just keep adjusting the values until it's correct. I'm not going to go for perfection here, I'm going to go larger for speed. So a bit, maybe it's a little bit too small, we'll go 0.3 with this one. So I'm just going to check that these look correct. I'm going to turn off these uh, other two so I can see if the hat looks fine, uh, which it does not. So I'm going to move this oh, wizard's hat forwards a little bit and up. And I'm going to make sure that all these look roughly correct before I proceed. So again, I'm just going to move these slightly forward, just so we don't have this rim intersecting with the head occluder too much. Right, that'll do. Okay, so now we have our three hats and we have our three values here. All we need to do is simply select each hat, click on the arrow next to the visible option on that 3D object, and link it to the equals value that we want it to be representative of. So I'm doing this with the three hats. Like so now if I press play, it should by default start off at zero. So zero could be your kind of hat um, or question, for example, if you wanted a question plane. And then we go to up here, simulate touch. And now when I tap the screen, It'll cycle through the hats until this value exceeds six seconds. And once it exceeds six seconds, it will stop and it will choose one of these three values here. And I can reset it by tapping the screen again. There we go. And as you see, it will basically choose a random value between zero, one, and two, and then show that appropriate hat that is given. So this is just a quick way of showing you how you can set up uh, 3D objects using a random generator um, effect and again as you see there's not a lot to it it's actually super simple to do um, the challenging part obviously is making sure that your project file sizes keep as optimal as possible and try not to go crazy with the 3D models where, um, because again you're limited by the project size so just a little heads up you can always go to project edit properties compression and you can always adjust the compression settings here. Um, also if you go to file preferences you can also in the general settings have your 3D models automatic scale so they don't come in too huge. They'll still come in large but not too big uh, which can happen. Uh, or you can also select each individual model uh, is material and you should be able to also adjust the uh, values for the textures assigned to them to again compress those as much as possible. So for example this one here has a base color metallic rough and a normal. We could adjust the compression settings manually for that texture. Anyway this is basically um, how to do 3D random image generation in Spark AR. I've been Soon Fisher, thank you for watching. Please check out the other videos um, 
related to this series and if you've got any queries or questions please comment down below and I'll try and answer them as quick as I can. Always remember to like and subscribe and thank you for watching.